We're gonna show you how much a breeder makes. People ask all the time, do you make six figures? My answer is yes. Now, before you go running and you cash in your IRA or your 401k or any other Ks or A's that you happen to have, before you do all that, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. We're gonna show you how much a breeder makes. We're also gonna show you costs. So if you only pay attention to one thing and you don't pay attention to the other, you may be misleading yourself. Also, there's reinvestment so that in the future you can make more. Like anything else, fam, if you stop watering the plant, it's just not gonna grow. Now I want you to keep in mind there's three types of people in this world. There are those that play the lottery and win, those that play the lottery and lose, and those that flat out just don't play the lottery and don't leave anything up to chance. Put up their big boy pants and go out there and get it. Pretty much you're not leaving things up to chance. This may be the video for you. If you have patience, breeding can not only become a passive income for you, it could also become a totally active income for you. It's not hard for a breeder to make six figures. However, you're all already starting to think how you're gonna shortcut. You're already thinking about nothing but the numbers. I'm gonna produce 100 puppies, sell them for this much, make that much. Bam, watch this video to the end. I'm gonna break it down step by step. Okay, don't go falling into the simple math trap and think, okay, well, we we're able to produce 10 puppies at $3,000 a pop, that's 30,000, so we produce 30, that's 90,000. Yeah, that's real good arithmetic, but it doesn't necessarily always work that way. You need to watch this video to the end. We're gonna show you cost. We're also gonna show you reinvestment, so that way in the future, you're making more on returns. This way your program grows and it's also sustainable. So hey, let me get down to it, let me get down to it. I just came out with a video recently showing you how to make over $100,000 with a stud. Now it's real important that you realize the dynamic that you're in. Do you live in a house, apartment, loft, farm, boat, townhouse? Where you live and the type of space you have is gonna dictate as to what you can do. This is what I mean by your dynamic. So for example, those of you that live in apartments or in small areas, or you cannot necessarily have too many dogs, I would say a stud Stud is probably the best way to go. Now the numbers for the stud go as follows. All right, so once your puppy turns one, you're gonna be able to stud them out. Now it's really important that you've done the marketing that goes with it from the very beginning. Once you get your puppy, you become that puppy's agent. You wanna take video, you wanna take pictures of daily living, what it's doing. You wanna show people its structure. You wanna show people where it came from, who the parents were, pedigree. You want people to feel comfortable with your pup and to be able to see it as a missing piece of the puzzle to their female. Once that pup turns one, you're gonna be be able to stud them out. Now, don't go jumping off a cliff just yet. When I say stud them out, you're talking about no more than $500, $1,000 tops or a pup back, which is more realistic for somebody that's trying to arm themselves and make it the most economic way. But right now we're just talking about numbers. No one is really going to want to pay you more than that unless your stud has proven himself as being a producer. So for that first year, let's just say you're studying them once or twice a month at $500. So you're looking at a profit margin of the first year, anywhere between $6,000 and $12,000. That's just the first year. Obviously, if you're getting pup backs, that's a whole different ball game because each particular pup is going to be worth whatever the seller is selling it for. So you could do the math on that. So after that second year, uh, realistically, if he's been producing well, you could be raising your stud prices to $1,500 to $2,000. So you're looking at roughly anywhere between $18,000 and $48,000 a year off of simply studying your dog. Now, the type of marketing you give your dog and the type of productions that he's putting out is definitely going to determine what the price is more exactly. I'm just giving you a roundabout number. Also, how you carry yourself when doing business is definitely going to either make or break your dog. What I mean by that is if somebody paid you a deposit on the studying, yet for one reason or another, you never studied the female when it was time and he missed his window, you can rest assured that person is going to put it out on social media and it's definitely going to hurt you because you're going to be looked at as bad business. You want to make sure you honor your contracts. Your boy is available on time for either collection for shipment or available for natural mounting. Fam, don't misrepresent your dog. Do not Photoshop. Do not be taking pictures pictures on slanted ground, show your dog for what he is. If you show up when it's time for the study and your dog looks nothing like he does in the pictures you're posting, the owner of the dam is going to let the world know that your dog really isn't all that. This is why it's really important that you don't misrepresent. Year three is the year that your stud should be taking off. If he's been producing well and you've been marketing him and you've been able to stud to reputable breeders and they're putting him out there along with their female on their breeding, then by the time the third year rolls around, $2,500 
dollars to three thousand dollars or even more for a studying is not out of the question fam and if you're marketing them correctly you should be able to stud them out no less than one or two times a month if you do a really good job you may get up to three or even four times but for all intents and purposes we're going to keep all the numbers down i don't want to be blowing anybody's head out or anything like that just to be able to stud your dog once or twice a month it is going to take a lot of work if somebody thinks out here that you're just simply going to pay facebook ads and just throw it out there and it's going to happen i have another story for you fam people really want to see that you're a real person if you're paying for these ads and these sorts of things at the end of the day you don't have a grassroots following. Nothing is organic. Nobody really cares about your product and therefore they're really not gonna buy into it. So the best thing to do is just to be genuine, put in the hard work. By the time the third year rolls around, things will change dramatically. At $2,500 a month, studying him once or twice a month, realistically, you're looking at anywhere between 30 and $60,000 a year off of this one stud. So the way you carry yourself as far as business is concerned, taking your deposit, having the dog available on time, having the sperm collection available on time, these things all add up, fam, and will give you a reputation whether you're good or you're not. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've seen in a group chat where people are throwing other breeders under the bus because they were never able to get the sperm on time. Sperm that they paid a deposit on or they even paid the full amount and they just never got on time. Now you gotta wait another six months. So you can see how fast this could become a negative situation for the breeder. In order to prevent a negative situation, don't get too greedy. I already know what you're thinking. Oh, I'm gonna stud my dog 10 times in a month. I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do that because that's how people create really bad reputations for themselves and their dog. You don't know how many times I've seen in a Facebook chat how they're talking about this popular dog and you will not believe how they're saying how low his sperm count is. Nine times out of 10, it's not that the dog has a low sperm count. It's that they're studying him two and three times in a week. Sometimes the dog's not even getting 24 hours rest in between in order to build up his numbers. So when you get greedy like that, that's when the numbers start getting skewed and that's where you go from the top to the bottom real quick. Up to now, I've been talking about two-tone solid color dogs. If we were talking about tries, realistically, you could add $1,000 to each example I just gave you. In the first year, you could expect $18,000 to $24,000 range as far as return on investment because you would open them up at $1,500. Again, fam, we got to base ourselves off of dogs that are breed quality or better. If you have a pet quality in front of you, everything I'm saying goes out the window. After the second year on the tried dog, anywhere between 30 and 60,000. After the third year for a tried dog, you're looking at a range of 48,000 to 84,000. And that's just for that one stud. Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm not gonna get into Merle. We're gonna leave that for the following video. Now let's talk about cost and upkeep. So this breed quality pup, now notice I'm not, I'm not talking about show quality. I'm just looking for a breed quality pup. It's gonna run you anywhere between $2,500 and $3,500. And I'm just throwing a number out there. Could be more. For shots, registrations, and whatnot, you're looking at about $300. After year number one, you're looking at a total investment of $5,000. After year number two, you're roughly looking at $6,500. Year number three, you're looking at roughly 8,000. So let's talk about the time investment you need to put into your dog to make this successful. First and foremost, you need to exercise your dog daily, at least an hour to an hour and a half. And I'm just talking about exercise. I'm not talking about just letting him out and letting him run around and, and pee and poop. You need to put in at least an hour exclusively to marketing on a daily basis. Now, some people like to do it all in one day, like take all the pictures for the week on Sundays, because that, that's the day that they have off, and that's perfectly fine. But keep in mind, people don't like to see repeated pictures. People like to see dogs in different places and doing different things and showing different sides of themselves. In order to be able to do this, you're gonna have to put in an hour a day. So if I was to pay you $7.50 for every hour you put into marketing, you're looking at $2,700 that you're spending in a year as far as time being paid that amount into marketing your dog. So now when you look at the real cost, you're looking at $7,700 the first year, you're looking at $10,400 the second year, and you're looking at $13,100 the third year. These are realistic numbers, man. In fact, I think I'm being quite modest in the numbers that I'm throwing out there. Now, the one factor that cannot be quantifiable is consistency. 
How consistent are you going to be? The consistency that you put behind this is the number one ingredient for its success or for its failure. Let's go over some quick traps that you want to stay away from. So I already know what you're thinking. I'm going to go after this big name. I'm going to go after that big name, put it together and pow. Now, please don't get it twisted. I'm not against big names or big brands. QB and K has a name and we have our brand. The point I want you to take is this. Before your dog gets to three years, you're going to soon realize nobody's going to be willing to pay more than $1,500 for a studying and that you're barely going to be able to stud them, you know, every other month if that. It is then that you realize that you spent all this money and all this time and all this effort However, your return on investment is going to be slow at best. There's nothing better than if you're going to buy big name, make sure it comes with good structure. Once you got good structure and you got big name, now you're cooking fam. But if you only got big name and no structure, you're going to be in a world of hurt. People nowadays are watching a lot of our videos and they're realizing and demanding better structure from the breeders. So if you go out there and you buy a big name and the puppy doesn't have the structure to go with it, you might find yourself in a pickle. So I'm gonna tell you right now, don't, don't, don't get greedy. Fam, don't get greedy. There's nothing better than to go through the full experience with your current pup. It's gonna help you maximize them. Also, it's gonna give you an idea how to maximize your future studs at hand. The females are a little bit more complicated. You cannot breed them at one years of age, some people like to breed them on the second heat, but you can run into trouble. Preferably, third heat is the best, but you're looking at a wait of somewhere between 20 to 24 months. So after 20 to 24 months, you finally have your six pups on the ground. We're going to be using six pups as an example because it's the most realistic number. So you could expect somewhere around $1,500 to $2,500 per puppy. So to make math easy, we're just going to call it $2,000. So you're finally getting... $12,000 for your first litter. Four months later, she goes into her fourth heat and she drops her puppies two months after that. She drops another six puppies. Again, you don't have pups that you can really point the finger to and show what she's able to produce. You have six puppies that are six months from her previous litter. So in this particular litter, you're pretty much gonna average about $2,000 again. So you're looking at another $12,000. So in this particular year, you made 24,000. On her fifth heat, you let her rest. So six months go by and there's nothing that's gonna come in. You breed her again at her sixth heat. You now have one-year-old pups and six-month-old pups that you're able to point the finger at and show people her production. So we're gonna raise the prices of your puppies from $2,500 to $3,500 average. So let's call it 3,000, just to give you an easy range of math. So 3,000 at six pups, you're looking at roughly $18,000 you're gonna make off of that one litter. Again, four months later, she'll go into heat and she'll drop puppies two months after that. Again, depending how you carry yourself throughout business, how much you've marketed, and also the production that she's putting out there. Let's go ahead and call it another $3,000 per pup. So now you made $18,000 again. So you now made $36,000 on this female's second year of production. Now it's time to go ahead and spay her. She's already dropped four litters for you. She made a total of $60,000 for you in her productions. But now let's talk about cost. So here we go. Uh, let's say it's $3,500 for the female because you try to find the best foundation female you could afford twelve hundred dollars for food for every hour of marketing that you put into your dog that includes taking pictures you're going to pay yourself seven dollars and fifty cents comes down to two thousand seven hundred at the end of the year when you add all that up it gives me a grand total of seven thousand four hundred just for that first year we put in the cost for the food and the marketing for the second year it gives me a total of eleven thousand four hundred on the third year all in all you spent fifteen thousand five hundred dollars again we're giving you a roundabout it could happen that your female doesn't take now you can see the other side of the story when the stud owner is not available and your female didn't take, not only did it cost you money, more importantly, it costs you time. There's absolutely no, 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 no guarantee, fam. She might not get pregnant or she may have two or three puppies in one particular litter. This is why a lot of breeders do surgical AIs and artificial inseminations in order to maximize the pregnancies. Traps you should never fall into. Breeding without doing your research. You gotta realize your female has shorter shelf life than a male will ever. A male could be producing well into his six years of age. Female, typically by the time they hit four, time to spay. So make sure you make good use of your time. Don't just breed to a big name. Make sure that it's gonna bring good structure into your production, especially if you're gonna be keeping pups. The real smart breeders, the real smart breeders, they take their females to the best structured males. 
keep females and males off of those litters. And then in the future, those males become better studs than they actually started out with. And they have females that are foundation females that are better than what they started out with. All the numbers I just gave you are going to be going up because by then your marketing would already carry you. You see, your marketing doesn't stop because you spayed your female. By this time, you've already kept the female that you've been bringing up and you've been able to associate with your marketing and your brand. Obviously, there's power in number. If now you have three females, you can multiply the very numbers I gave you by three, by four, by five. Now, fam, these are the numbers. The ethics behind it, you already know. Don't just breed for the sake of breeding. There's already cat and dog overpopulation in the U.S. Just breeding for the 